Now to a CBS 21 News special assignment. More and more people are turning to essential oils for anything from weight loss to improving health. So what exactly are they and what precautions should you take if you use them? CBS 21's Christina Butler has the story. And then you can... Inhaled, applied, or ingested. Take a breath away. Essential oils are quickly becoming essential to many families. They gave her Dilaudid, they gave her Ativan, they gave her Imitrex. Kathleen Gingrich witnessed them relieve a family member's crippling migraine. Going on for seven or eight days, was not able to be abated, had been to the ER, had been to the doctor, had gotten all kinds of medications, and it just didn't go away. A mix of oils. It didn't get rid of it completely, but it helped to abate it when none of the medications did that. We, I believe in going to the doctor. I, I don't She's not alone. Gwen Wheeler became a believer and later a distributor of doTERRA oils after her daughter got two staph infections. The first... The doctors took it very seriously. They, they stabbed an antibiotic pen into her muscle several times and she was on two different types of medications. And it took a long time and it finally went away. The second time, the infection was identical and in the exact same place. Wheeler remembered she had oil stashed in a drawer. I, I put some olive oil and some oregano, like I was cooking, on her ear and a little bit of frankincense. And I, I was like, this is ridiculous. I, I'm doing this. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm putting it here and I'm putting it down her neck. Within an hour. All that was left was this little crust around her ear. And it wasn't swollen anymore. And it, there wasn't a rash. And I couldn't even, I could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. I, I was like, it cannot be these oils. But it was the oils and no prescription needed. Oils and fragrances have been a part of humanity since way, way back when. What do you do about staph infections? And it, and it lists some of the things like... Uh, Dr. John Neely with Penn State Hershey says that's one of the reasons for oils climbing popularity. I often find in my, when I see the patients in my integrative medicine clinic, is people come in with 10 or 12 different medications, all from different, for different purposes. They cross-react with each other. They have more problems with the medications than they do with the original disease, and it's just not a good way to go. Understanding self-care, understanding what's out of balance and how to bring things into balance, it's a much better way to go. Maybe you can just smell that. This is one For stress for relief calling. or relaxation, he recommends lavender or a blend. But he stresses all oils need to be used properly and from a well-researched producer. You know, I guess I would ask about these, be skeptical about them, but go ahead and, and, and give them some try. Peppermint is a common one. One drop is equivalent to 26 cups of peppermint tea. It can soothe stomach aches and headaches. But if ingested improperly, it can be fatal. The FDA does not regulate oils. They aren't prescription, so they're considered more like a vitamin. Two popular distributors, Young Living and Duterra, were sent letters at the height of the Ebola outbreak in 2014, warning them they cannot tout their products as treatments or cures. Those were claims paid representatives of the companies made. Others, like Wheeler, who has a pharmaceutical background, don't make promises for particular cures. It's been years, and I still can't believe when these oils work for, for many different things. She holds parties like this one, where people can come learn about the oils and their preventative benefits. The essential oils come from plants. They're aromatic compounds that naturally come from plants, and they protect the plants from disease.